Alright guys, subscribe here again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. What a day at Call of Duty. So much drama, loads of great storylines coming down as well, but also Dashi making a severe statement today from the CDL's perspective on the state of their servers after the match against Paris Legion, saying that after all the rumours and talk of some of these teams the last few weeks, the fact that these servers aren't very good, Dashi certainly agrees and says the CDL need to do something about it. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Williams of the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. Not too far away from 80k. Love to see it. Game day. Squad is back. Say Opti, of course, confirming Illy back in the starting team. We were kind of expecting some sort of video explainer from Illy exactly what's going on, but yeah, Illy's back. We all know it at this point. But first of all, we've got to talk Ravens versus the Florida Mutineers. Big series, not just for Florida, but for the other teams as well. I'm sure New York were watching on hoping that London won this one because New York have to hope and other teams in a similar boat that every single team around them keeps on losing. And as soon as I saw the start of this game, when I was like, okay, yeah, fair enough. It was funny because earlier today I thought, okay, maybe Mutineers is edgy in a game five and then when it came to do my predictions on breaking point I was like no London are just too good and I went for them in the end and I'm glad that I did because after seeing this game when I was like yeah this is done and dusted 172 to 23 at a time they close this out with almost a hundred point club but yeah honestly Florida looked so lost in the respawns it's unbelievable okay yes they won the control but London just can't win a control to save their lives but both of these half points it reminded me really about when New York Subliners played Los Angeles Grillers in the half points and they pretty much hundred point club than both maps it wasn't a similar story here honestly London good at half point of course, but I got just the way Florida are playing, like man, obviously it was tragic, they weren't winning any gunfights at all, making so many like just terrible plays, not playing as a team, no confidence it seemed as well, and that was the thing, I thought when this team made the change, Vivid out to reel in, the team gets worse in respawn, maybe better at search and destroy though due to Major Maniac, but if you can't even get to a game 5, then of course you're not going to have too much of a good time, and at this point, it ends up being at well, 2-0 advantage for London, crucial, another round 11 win for them, I think there was some crazy stat that was mentioned here, that had like the 35 or so search and destroys, that London have played this year. 16 of them, pretty much half of their searches go round 11. And their record, I think, is okay. They win another one right here. Massive for London, of course, because they can't win a control to save their lives. But in the end, it does not matter. And they win the final half one as well to close out the series. Mutineers say time to reverse sweep. That didn't happen at all. They go down to London again in dominating fashion here on the Berlin. Lots of thinking to be done here because if you can't win respawns against London, London obviously playing right now like an incredible team. No doubts, like even Nasty, the way he's been activated the last few series, playing like the player that we kind of heard he was going to be. That's very exciting indeed as well, and London are playing like they could be, you know, back to stage one form, like where they came top three at major one, but still, when you're getting blown out like Florida did in this series, just goes to show that on this current form, they're not going to make the world championship right, unless they can somehow scrape out some game five victories. So, well, this is incredibly encouraging for New York subliners, given their position, and also Minnesota to Rocker kind of get a let off after losing to London yesterday, Mutineers also lost, that kind of puts them on a level playing field, but of course, it's an absolutely incredible race for the world championship, and definitely it's all to play for going into major four as well, so London Royal Ravens get the job done. They're of course now guaranteed for the World Championship as well. Gizmo had a great series individually, not just enabling the rest of the team to do well. Afro, Nasty, Zero all turned up when it was required. These were the overall stats, right? Not a pretty sight if you're a Florida Mutineers fan. 2 real, 0.6 real on this occasion. Like another 0.6 just like his debut series. Major Maniac as well, a 0.7. Like, um, I mean, yeah, it's honestly kind of incredible to think about that Vivid was stuck in 2 reels role and like um, his stats weren't particularly good enough. 2 reels in this role, and, like um, he's getting absolutely fried as well. So probably said something about the way this team is trying to play Call of Duty. Let's talk the Optic series then up against Paris. This, of course, we talked earlier today. Could Paris pose a threat? I thought they did pose a threat, but if anything, just because Optic were kind of, well, let off the steam, let's just say, on the game three we shall discuss. But game one and two were pretty much as you might expect them to be. Paris seemingly do rather well in scrims. I kind of knew we were going to get a Bacage game one here between these two teams. Both teams like it, but when Shotzi's making plays like this, it's a, well, rather difficult to stop him, to be honest. So, yeah, Paris, they're decent at this map, but are never really good enough. And Optic just have some sort of love affair, it seems, with with it going well, taking a Bacage to time. Eventually, they have a rather substantial advantage. They contest the hard point. They get the job done, as expected. Like, the slaying power in the respawns on Paris is just not there at all. Like, their SMG Joy might be better in Search and Destroy now, but it's just not there in the respawns. And it just means that you're not really going to be able to compete with a team like Optic that are just going to outslay you off the face of the earth, as did Dashi. Well, he was included with the rest of the guys' game one. Shotzi 1.7, Dashi 1.4. If anything, an outslay by more than they should have done, given the scoreline. But if you win the game, who really cares at the end of the day? And 
and then game two, it's a, it's a Tuscan search and destroy. Johnny just comes up first round and just pops an ace. Like that was again, we see it from this guy when in search and destroys, he actually can be very impactful, right? So that's impressive. But then it wasn't long after that where pretty much everyone else on the team had no kills, right? And I'm pretty sure they were going into the final round of the game with the, the entire Paris team outside of Johnny having one kill combined, which obviously is not what you want. The Optic guys eventually come back. They actually look like themselves again. Like, oh, we'll play some decent rounds in search and destroy. But this Tuscan control was certainly a concern, right? Because earlier this season, the Tuscan controller was getting Optic through a lot of series. They were just ridiculously good at that map early on. Dashi, just like, you couldn't stop him on it. They'd beat everyone on Tuscan control. They'd have to, the other teams would have to take them to Kavutu and they don't even lose Kavutu either early on in the year. But the control was a big talking point, right? That if their control falls off, what does their series win rate look like? And certainly losing this one against Paris in the fashion they did and losing it to Boston a few days ago and losing it, I'm pretty sure, at the major as well, definitely raises some questions as to what this team could potentially do going forward, right? Because they need their control to get back to a good level if they want to beat the top dogs. Now, where they've been playing on Tuscan lately is not pretty. The amount of single child I saw, I was kind of like, oh my god, are we really going to do it again? Go up 2-0 and then just completely throw the control because some of the players they're making just flying out on their own, dying. Like, I'm sure Rambo wasn't happy watching it. But uh, the comms definitely seem where we did hear listenings, like uh, with Ely back in the team, it does definitely seem a lot more coordinated and like uh, they seem to regain relatively well. I feel like without Ely, they might just not have regained from that map three, but they do. They win the map four anyway. But as Round 11 stats says, they were 11 in two with Ely on Tuscan before the game. Paris were one in seven, right? So kind of crazy to think about that they lost this one relatively comfortably in the end. And what the street will remember the fact that Paris managed to shut down Dashi on this at well, Tuscan control for one of the first times you're ever going to see this entire season. And if you're Optic fan for the rest of the season, hopefully, because certainly they need to get back to form on this particular map that was their bread and butter at the start of the year if they want to make runs through Major Four and the World Championship. But in the end, it's a Berlin half point. They win it anyway. Paris just not good enough at the end of the day. The same power was not there. And in the end, it was actually Ily of all people to turn up and put on an absolute clinic at the end on this final half point. Ily was just making some absolute plays and that was, well, critical for them to win the game. So good for Ily to make his play. Like, he came back here went double positive on the final map, showed why he belongs in the team for more reasons, of course, than just his lane prowess at the end of the game. And a must needed victory, of course, for the Optic Texas guys. They take down Paris. Paris still on 20 points. Tough scenes for them, of course, as Scum says, play New York tomorrow. That's going to be far from an easy series for the Optic guys based on the way New York played in the next series we are going to discuss. Do you feel bad for Donny Temp though as he says just not good for my mental health now I can't win a thing wake up every day get absolutely spanked so yeah you know I do feel bad for Donny man because apparently their scrims have been going okay but I guess Paris are just scrim merchants right because they've been frying people in scrims apparently come to the matches still get blown out of the water by Seattle and Optic. Series they're expected to lose but I'm um, still they just can't seem to buy a break at the moment so unfortunate stuff but this was probably the spiciest thing we saw of the day from Dashi that came out after the game itself. These league servers are a joke fake gameplay being displayed. So he tweets this out kind of during the next series and maybe kind of in regard to what he kind of felt within his own series. Maybe he talked with the rest of the team about it, right? And, and says, you know, whatever was going on potentially in that control or whatever, like it just did not feel the same way. He reckons that some maps, some servers feel super different to others. The idea is from the league's perspective that they're meant to have this kind of like ping control situation where like if one team has a higher ping, they can kind of differentiate from that, right? But even in this situation, Paris and Optic, both based in Texas, that shouldn't really be too much of a big deal. So maybe he's just talking about like either the latency or the hit registration isn't quite there. I don't really know. We'll see if there's any clarification on this over the coming days, but also possible that, you know, the finest slap comes at it from the CDL right. But interesting from Dashi, because it's rather rare that the Optic guys are the ones that are kind of, well, laying the dagger on the CDL and saying, look, fix your servers. But, oh, well, clearly Dashi is doing exactly that right here and saying something obviously needs to change because that effectively fake gameplay, right? If we lose series, if people lose series, he doesn't reckon you can always guarantee if those legitimate victories or losses, like uh, arguably you could look at the Boston versus Thieves series from the other day where Boston got 3 0 now twice in a row on a server that they reckon is certainly not advantageous for them. So tweet your perspective on that one in the comment section below. Final stats of the series are like this. Illy with the 1.25, Dashi with the 1.25, and yeah, Jimbo, Johnny, Not it well, wasn't looking too pretty on the other side of things, right? At least one of the SMGs is always liable to just get absolutely destroyed on the Paris Eastern side as per usual. Let's talk Subliner Surge then, because wow, what a series this was. Incredibly crucial, because Subliners just saw Florida Mutineers lose. They knew this was their chance. Get to 100 points, try and make something happen here. Like, um, all they really needed is this series win, and now it's very much on, right? Now, all of a sudden, they just need to do rather well at the major, and they should be able to make it in, regardless of what happens in their final two matches. But they beat Seattle Surge, right? What a scout for them to take. They looked phenomenal this series. Settle again, like, uh, some inconsistencies creeping through. But Subliners right now are playing, like, one of the best teams in the game, and easily a team that's good enough to make the World Championship. I hope they do, because I want to see them there, because they're easily good enough to compete with the top dogs, as you've just seen right here. They win game one, Bacage. That's impressive in itself, right? To actually challenge Seattle on Bacage and win it. We saw Boston do that yesterday. That seems to be the recipe. Game 2 as well still usually pretty coherent in their search and destroys. This is a very different story. Hydra made a crazy play right here. Literally on 1 
HP. The bomb goes down over towards the B side, and then he literally just picks up the bomb and defuses it, and it actually works out for him, right? It's kind of incredible the fact that this even worked. But the Seattle guys don't check it in time. Hydra just hops on the defuse. That's 4 1. They end up closing out this map 6 to 1. And I thought they were going to 3 0 Seattle as well, but in the end, it's actually, a, well, an offense on control. The Seattle do a rather good job clutching up in. So they show what they were kind of capable of, what they are capable of. But New York effectively had more on the line this series. They were playing like their lives depended on it effectively, as they kind of do. And Seattle certainly have to think about this, right? Because yes, they won the major, but it wasn't long before they won the major that they were getting blown out of the Prime Classic by Silly and Fire 40. So there definitely are some inconsistencies in their gameplay they're going to have to seriously think about right here. But in the end, it's New York Sunland as it closes out the series. They win a monster game four as well. Like a, what a you know, crushing map this was in the end of 250, 236, I believe. And New York were one of those teams where like it wasn't convincing at all that they were actually good in the clutch moments. They proved exactly that they can do that right here against Seattle, winning at a critical, like at well, hard point right here. You don't want to go game five against a team like Seattle. But Sublin has closed out right. Like what a great team performance. Kismet individually as well was a monster in terms of objective kills. Like the amount of impact he was having was absolutely spectacular. And as Krim says, not doing interviews anymore. Quit asking business mode only from here on out. And that's kind of what Kismet was saying as well. No pressure on us. We're just going to take every series as we can. And that now leaves New York in this situation. They've won three of their games so far. They play Optic and Thieves to close out their stage. Both of those on the way they're currently playing are certainly winnable. If they go 5-0, and oh, it's well and truly on. But even as it is right now, right, they're only 20 points behind Rocker and the Mutineers. If they have a good major on, if they win the major right now on 100, they'll get 65 points. 165 should be good enough, right? They're going to need a little bit more than they have right now. But the run and the hopium is well and truly flowing right now. And these are the final series. That's a Kismet 1.26. Like, very rarely you see Kismet have a series statistically like this. And when it happens, he's just going to take over. And again, despite Pred again, like, Pred is honestly, like, one of the best players, if not the best player in the game right now. But Sid, 0.8, Mac, 0.7. Like, um, that's not going to cut it. And I was expecting it to only get better for New York in this final series, because if LAG lost this one, all of a sudden, they're there or thereabouts as well, dropping down into that kind of elimination side for the World Championship. But FaZe versus LAG, wow, this seemed like a repeat of the grand finals we saw at Major 2. LAG somehow out of nowhere came to play. We talked a lot of, right, about Hook and Neptune. Where was this SMG duo? Where has Hook been this year? Right? Where have been his takeover series? This certainly was one of them. Neptune had a great series as well. All the guys played phenomenal. You could tell they came in here with the fire. FaZe probably got a bit too comfortable in this series. But I mean, losing here on Bacage to Los Angeles Gwillers, that was a massive surprise because we talked about that theoretically this SMG duo on LAG should not be able to compete with the likes of FaZe. They do it game one. Game two, though, goes the way of FaZe. I was thinking, okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. Here we go again. FaZe are going to win this one 3 1. They did the same a few days ago. Like the last game one, they go back and win the series. Not to be the case at all, though. This was a ridiculous Tuscan control. So much fun to watch. In the end, it was a monstrous offensive round and plays by Slasher, respectively, getting a well two massive kills and then finishing off with a three piece as well. Litigo absolutely came to play in this one. This really did feel like a series where LAG just came in thinking, look, we've got to win this. We're going to absolutely play our hearts out. FaZe are sitting there thinking, okay, number one seed, whatever. We'll come in trying to do our best. But yeah, FaZe got um, pretty much destroyed in the respawns of this series. It's remarkable to think about that LAG after looking down and out not long ago. They said, look, we're not just going to not make the world championship without a fight. We're going to come in here. Sasha gets the three piece to close out the offense. They win the defense as well. And then we go to a final Berlin hard point. And this was a phenomenal map as well, right? Los Angeles Gullers had a pretty substantial lead. Face come back. In the end, it's Hook with some crucial kills. They get a phenomenal rotation towards the final points. Craziness inside the hard point. But in the end, it's Gorillas that come out on top. Unbelievable series. Hook just went absolute demon mode in this one. I mean, yeah, wow. Illy's back in business. Phaser shook. Who's surprised? But um, I mean, yeah, it's crazy to think about, right? Oh, look, it's Vanguard at the end of the day. We know there can be inconsistencies. But Phase admitted, and even watching the series, it was obvious they did not play particularly well in the series. Simps says, actually, they played terribly. Like, uh, they've, of course, got to bounce back. But I mean, look, fair play to Gorillas. Must win series for them. They needed these points more than anything right now to prove that they're kind of, could, they could arrest their decline. And that's exactly what they do. Definitely the team with the talent and the potential on their day want to see a little bit more of them though going forward as well. And this I think raises a very interesting question with FaZe losing a series like this to one of the lowest ranked teams in the entire league right now, arguably 11th best in terms of power rankings. Definitely like, well, puts FaZe in a bit of a question mark, right? How good actually are they? Can they actually win a championship this season? Can they win an event this season? Because they were looking pretty much indomitable the last couple of weeks or so. Now losing this series raises the question, can they really be putting it together when the pressure is on? But that's going to do it for today. Some unbelievable storylines. RC's with a 0.7, Sip with a 0.84, Slasher with a 1.4, Hook with a 1.2. Just phenomenal plays in both of those guys. But that's the thing. Both Optic losing to Minnesota the other week and also Faze now losing to LAG is putting the pressure on New York subletters to really get these victories. But unbelievable day. I'm sure so much to talk about on this stuff in the coming days as well. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit on the like button. Tell us YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. 
and upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.